after a while of working for money, money should start working for you. It's important to have savings, yes, but it's also important to have assets that will grow over time to fund your desired lifestyle. Hi everyone. I'd like to start this video off by offering my deepest condolences to those who are suffering as a result of the events unfolding in Europe and by extension around the world. It is absolutely shattering and shocking to see what is occurring right before our eyes in the 21st century. And I think it's also quite interesting to note the responses from various governmental organizations, various countries, and really various power yielding entities. I do hope and I pray for a very quick uh, resolution and peaceful solution to the ongoing conflict. So with that being said, I actually think today's video is very relevant to what is occurring around the world. Now, money is a very powerful entity, as I like to call it. I know that a lot of people do not like to discuss the issue of money, but it happens to be extremely important in each and every one of our lives. Whether that's directly or indirectly, money does affect you. So I believe that your relationship with money is very crucial to how successful, perhaps to some extent, how happy a life you actually end up living. And I'll explain all that later on in this video. And so for that reason, I do think that it is of the utmost importance that every now and then we consider our relationship with money and how that actually affects our day-to-day -day living, how that has affected us in the past and how it will determine how we move forward in life, how we progress, accomplish our goals, how we accomplish our ambitions, etc. Now, personally, I always respected money. I was brought up in a way to regard money, to respect money, but I never really fully understood just how powerful money is. Not until I started evaluating my own personal relationship with money, evaluating how it affects the world around me, even when I don't have a direct input into decision-making processes and the occurrences around me. But after that point, after I started to get a better understanding of just how powerful money is, it really did change my life, it changed my perspective, and it really changed my overall relationship with money. There is an incredibly powerful verse in the Bible which talks about money and it is from Ecclesiastes 10:19, and it reads, A feast is prepared for laughter and wine makes life merry, but money answereth all things. Another version talks about all things obeying money. You know, when I read that and I started to appreciate the magnitude and the weight of that verse, I think it sent a shiver down my spine as to just how important this element is. I genuinely believe that money yields tremendous amounts of power. Some people might disagree, but if you can think about one wealthy person who is not powerful, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd be very interested to learn about that. Who are the decision makers around the world? It's those that most likely have a lot of power and most times back in that power is a lot of money. Now that's not to say that you don't have powerful individuals that are not necessarily wealthy, but they yield tremendous amount of influence and that's something completely different. There are several reasons why an individual might be influential, but maybe not necessarily the wealthiest individual. But I still believe that influence is connected to wealth. Influence is connected to money, either directly or not. Now, I would like to state one critical point upfront before I delve into uh, the rest of this video, which is that money at some point has to start working for you and not you constantly working for money until you retire. Now, society and the world order teaches us that when you are younger, you go to school, you learn, you get a good education, and when you are done with your education, you hopefully go out into the world and get a good job, a good steady job that will see you through up until retirement. What we are not taught is how to actually become financially independent. So you work for all of that money, 
but how do you make money work for you? Now, of course, I would say that we all agree that majority of the time, if you were to take a, a sample of the population, I think you would agree that most people start off their lives, their adult lives, you know, working for someone else. So there's nothing wrong with gaining those skills that you need in order to become uh, proficient and an expert in your chosen area of work. But the challenge is a lot of people believe that the natural order is to work and work and work sometimes for less pay than you actually deserve until you get to a point in life where you retire and perhaps are unable to do a lot of the things that maybe you were able to do when you were younger. We're not taught financial education. We're not taught financial intelligence. The fact that after a while of working for money, money should start working for you. I want you to think about number one, what your relationship with money is. If you were to lose your job today, would you be able to cope? Would you be able to meet your basic needs for the next year, for the next six months? Are you someone who prefers current consumption versus future comfort? Now data shows that the average household has just enough savings or enough funds to last a few weeks or perhaps a few months in the worst case scenario. I understand of course that there is a panoply in terms of you know earning and income levels so I want to speak more broadly if I may. What we are not taught in school as I said before is financial literacy and education. Understanding the importance of things like budgeting, cash flows, incomes, expenses, interest rates, savings versus investments and all of that. And one of my passions and luckily what I do for a living is exactly that. Not only do I manage wealth on behalf of extremely wealthy individuals and families as well as institutions, I also have the responsibility of educating uh, my clients and those around me as to how best to approach wealth management. So one of the questions I proposed earlier was, are you someone who prefers current consumption over future comfort? I think the events of the last two years have really highlighted how important it is to have some sort of a stable or a steady income flow. And I'm not talking about just from your employment. It's important to have savings, yes, but it's also important to have assets that will grow over time to fund your desired lifestyle. So that means sacrificing, perhaps not getting that really beautiful Chanel pair of shoes that you've been desperate to get, or perhaps that lovely Louis Vuitton bag, it may mean sacrificing. So the first thing I would recommend is understanding what your financial situation is. What I mean by that is what is your income and what are your monthly or your annual outgoings? So let's say you make 50,000 pounds or dollars a year and you have expenses or outgoings of $25,000 or pounds every year, it means that you have a residual of 25,000 that you could potentially spend or save or invest. And if you were to be honest with yourself, how do you currently, or how have you in the past spent that extra income or extra liquidity that you have? Some of us might have spent it all on things that we feel that we need, driven by today's very active and powerful media and advertising, or perhaps some of us have historically saved for a rainy day, or the rest of us may have invested and seen that investment grow over time. It really depends on individuals. I will tell you something though. One thing I've learned from working with wealthy individuals is that we often think that perhaps they don't pay attention to, you know, the small things and little expenses, etc. but they are very meticulous when it comes to money issues and how they spend their wealth, how their wealth works for them, and how it funds their lifestyle. So there are people out there who live off the dividends or interest that their assets accumulate over time. And I'm not talking about quote unquote average lifestyles. I'm talking about stupendously expensive and lavish lifestyles. But what they've done is they've invested over time or they've built businesses and they built resources that ensures they are able to do that. I want that for myself and I want that for you as well. 
So moving on from the first point of understanding what your financial situation is, the second thing I would recommend is some sort of a simple budget. I know when people hear budget, they think about spreadsheets and you know all of that. No, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Just a basic budget on what you spend your income on and what is left over. This will help you understand exactly what your residual or excess income is. The third point is to think about how you would like to spend the excess funds or cash flow that you have. Would you like to perhaps invest that in a savings account, which, you know, will yield you something, maybe 25 basis points or, you know, 50 basis points versus investing in an asset that will grow over time. Within investments as well, you want to think about whether you are someone who appreciates capital appreciation, i.e. the value of your funds growing over time, or whether you are someone who would appreciate cash flows, dividends, or interest payments perhaps from instruments that you hold. But this is a really important element to consider. So once you've decided on your approach, whether you'd like to, you know, be a saver or perhaps an investor, if you do decide to go down the savers route, make sure that you are doing your research is to understand what different banks offer in terms of their savings rates and perhaps other savings uh, products that they might offer. If you do decide to go down the investment route, which is where I get really excited, um, you also want to think about how to invest, what your asset allocation is going to look like. And by the way, when we talk about investments, it doesn't have to be anything gargantuan. You can start with $100 a month or perhaps $1,000 a month, $10,000, whatever it is you can afford is doable as long as your assets are working for you over time and they are growing over time to ensure your future comfort and lifestyle. That is the most critical and important thing. And of course, for those who would like to pass on wealth to their future generations, it's very important. But I think the last two years has shown just how resilient we are and also brought to light that the world won't stop if you start working from home. Employers oftentimes enjoy the narrative that, you know, everybody has to be at work, otherwise the business just won't function and everything will fall to the ground. Um, I think that the last two years has shown that that is not true. Some companies have experienced and enjoyed incredible performances, record performances over the last two years. And it just goes to show that it's really about your workforce, the passion behind driving the business. But I digress. The point I'm trying to make is that a lot of people have taken time out over the last two years to really think about what money means to them, how they can acquire additional streams of income so they are not reliant on just the one source, which might be, for example, your employment. But also what is important is once you've built your multiple streams of income, how do you manage the inflows and the revenues and the cash that comes from that? And the last thing I would like to point out is the importance of sacrifice. I've had to make personal sacrifices over the years. I've thought about what that could really do for my income level over time. And so, like I said, understanding my relationship with money and respecting money really helped me understand and accept a very significant, a very true and a very powerful point, which is that money affords you choices. We are not built to be slaves to money. And I think the minute you understand how to navigate your relationship with money to ensure that it's your friend and it works for you, that in itself can be incredibly life-changing. So I do hope this video has been helpful. As always, if it has, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you are the first to know the minute I upload. Also, don't forget to share the video with your friends and loved ones if you think they might benefit from it as well. If you would like to see more of these sort of videos around money, around financial intelligence and information, as well as wealth creation, definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below. A friend actually suggested this video in way of, I suppose, helping people navigate what's happening with the financial markets right now and also um, how they should approach the subject of finances going forward. Well, that's it for this video. Look after yourselves and remember, be good to money so it in turn can be good to you.